It happens every It happens every semester that a student comes to my office, shuts the door, and begins to cry. Uh, because they were out in the world pursuing some cause for justice, and somebody pushed back against them. And they got that backlash. And this has happened so many times that I have a sp speech that I have all prepared for them as I hand them their Kleenex. And I say, if you were sitting still and doing nothing, you would get no pushback. So you just got your badge of honor and you should wear it proudly. And then I say, and you have to decide in your life who judges you, who you respect, who you admire. Let them judge you, not the people who are going to attack you when you decide to take the justice side. And I thought of that little lecture when I thought about why I am so deeply honored to get this award, because the people I admire are in this room and doing the work that Aldif does. Um, and the fact that those people think that I did something of value um, is a deep honor indeed. Thank you very much to Margaret and all of you at Aldif. All right, I promised five minutes. So I'm just going to say two things about the times we especially need all day. All right, the first one is the emergency, like the freighter that crashes in the far Rockaways and suddenly there's hundreds of refugees huddled, freezing on the beach. They have no papers. They don't speak English. Who are you going to call? Thank you. Um, or another emergency that many of you lived through on September 11th. Uh, before the dust had even cleared, people at Aldef were thinking about our Asian American community and the people that would um, have lost lives, livelihood, housing, health, what their needs were going to be. They were also strategizing about the coming war to protect our civil liberties because they knew through their work on the Korematsu case and the um, movement for redress and reparations, that when there is fear, when we've been attacked, someone will come along and offer you a deal. How about you give up your Bill of Rights and we give you some safety? And that deal is a lie, and Aldiff knew it, and they knew the offer was coming, and they prepared in advance. I am so proud that the Asian American civil rights organizations were the first to the table to speak up to defend our Muslim brothers and sisters and um, to begin on September 12th the work um, of the fight to preserve rights for all Americans. So that's the emergency. And you need all death for the emergency. But what's the other time you need all death? You need them in this time. Do you hear that great cracking sound out there? It's the moment when you can have a justice convergence and make real, lasting, structural change that will leave all our lives better. It's no accident that Aldef was born 40 years ago. It came on the heels of that period from 1968 to 1974 when our country was turned inside out and we saw an anti-war movement, a civil rights movement, a feminist movement, a black power movement that began, begat a yellow power movement, that begat ethnic studies and the disruption of universities all over the country with young people saying we would like to learn our history, our way. If that had never happened, there's no way someone like me could have ended up a university professor. In that period, we heard words like racism, imperialism, oppression, and people would use those words without apology 
and they would not get kicked out of the conversation because the contradictions of the period were so intense. Our country was napalming babies. Our country was assassinating black militants in their bed while they slept. The disparity between who we were supposed to be and what we were doing was so profound that it opened up an opportunity of disruption and change, changes in law, changes that I would argue made all of our lives better. And then came 40 years of relative quietude, struggles, many of them that Aldiff led for justice, but not that same opportunity to turn everything upside down. Well, the justice convergence is back. Will our cities devolve into bubble-domed crystal palaces for billionaires with the workers living far on the outskirts in squalor? Will we ignore climate change until we are all underwater, until famine and flood reduce every nation to a failed state? Well, I had two students in my office last week for my organizing class. They had a little problem. We won. And the semester's not over yet. Now what do we do? So what had they won? They had worked on a campaign to raise the minimum wage in my home state of Hawaii to $10 an hour with a deduction for tip credit for um, restaurants. Yeah, it's a victory. We should celebrate. So I said, the first thing you do is go out and celebrate. But I said, you know what? It takes $35 an hour to afford to pay rent in Hawaii. We asked for 10, we got it, that's good. But did we ask for enough? It's time to start talking about transformative goals. In the long desert of complacency since the last justice convergence, I think we've forgotten how to do that. But I think there is an organization that knows how to do it. Who are you gonna call? There's a reason that Chinatown doesn't look like back-to-back -back Trump Towers. Aldef took on that struggle. They had a lit litigation strategy, and the community had a street strategy on a credible threat that we will put our bodies in the middle of construction sites to stop the destruction of our community. The willingness to take that kind of risks is back on center stage. We have the young people of Rays, the dreamers. Uh, we have the dream defenders in Florida, the Moral Monday marchers arising throughout the South. Large numbers of our fellow citizens understand that the world of have and have not, that obscene world of billionaires in their palaces and whole generations of children growing up in homeless shelters is not just and not sustainable. We want better, we can do better. We're gonna have to get arrested, some of us to do it. And some of us will have to be the ones that put the armbands on our hands and say legal observer. And some of us are gonna be the ones that text the checks to Margaret so she can go out and train the young people to do the work that we need to do to have another justice convergence to make this a better, stronger country where there really is opportunity for everyone. And that is going to be grand, and it's going to be joyful, and it's going to be beautiful, and I would be so proud to be a part of it. And that's why it's an honor to receive this award, to join all of you tonight to celebrate um, the big transformative work that's coming. Thank you very much.